What's up guys, my name's Stacy. welcome back to the channel. This is the Lethos Adventures channel. Um, I think now it's about time I spoke about this boat behind me. This is a, this is a, um, pride and joy of this boat. This took me a while to do. This is, this is the official Lethos Adventure boat. The date today is the 2nd of August. We're in lockdown again in Brisbane, so this is the best time to make this video. This boat is a Stacer boat. It's a Stacer Sea Sprite. It was built in 1996. It's a 3.9 meter tinny. It's pretty good, it's got a Johnson motor on it, a good old Johnny. Hey guys, so I'll be recording this video with three different cameras. So the first camera will be the, the Canon R6. This is the one in front of me here, see? And then I'll use the VideoMark Pro Plus uh, microphone. The second camera will be the good old GoPro Hero 9. This is the camera we take with on all our adventures. Uh, it's got a DD40 or DD4 microphone on the top. So it's got a capsule in the front and the back so you can record the voice from the back of the camera or in the front. And then the last camera would be the iPhone camera because um, while I restored this boat, I didn't uh, film much. I just took photos. And when I change cameras, I'm gonna put a description on the on the bottom. I might put it that side or there, or maybe I leave it that side there, um, just to show you what camera's recording. Um, if you're if you're a camera nerd like me, you'll probably appreciate it because you can see different types of qualities of the camera. Let's get to it guys, but I started back in, uh, I think it was 23rd of November, that's when I first saw this boat. So I went to this guy's house, me and my wife and my kids, and we uh, checked out this boat, and as soon as I saw it, I knew it, this was the boat, man. Check it out. And if you look at the video on my left over here, uh, that's the first time I saw the boat, the first time I videoed it, it was pretty good. I just walked around the boat, and just explaining what I saw, and then, um, the carpet and stuff needed to be fixed. There's there quite a bit of stuff that needed to be fixed. So it wasn't an easy fix, but it was doable. So I did it. Everything's good. Front steering wheel. See? It's got three um, cigarette lighters there. So you can add stuff there. Fish finder. Check it out, mate. Let those adventures, here we come. Put the lights. Not bad, eh? The next day after I got the boat, I took it to the Logan River. I took it for a spin with the kids and they loved it, man. I took it for a spin down the river and I went up the river and um, as I was going up the river, I, I put it on full throttle and then um, I heard a beep beep and then I, I knew straight away the, the motor overheated, so the motor overheated. And so luckily I had my water snake uh, motor from the kayak on the boat for backup and the, the, the current was going downstream back to the um, boat ramp which worked out perfect because I just put the water stake on the boat and I went down the current into the boat ramp. So that, that's what happened the first time I rode the boat. It overheated, okay? So you can see in the video on my left here, yeah, um, I was not in a good mood, man. I was like, oh, I just bought, bought this boat and overheated. And then I took it down to the um, the marine guard, to the, the mechanic. He fixed it. I needed an, uh, the, the water pump had blown. So that's why I was overheating. After I planned what I'm gonna do with the boat, I stripped everything out except the wires in the front on the dashboard. I left that in, but the wires on the side of the boat, you can see in the picture on my right here what it looked like. Um, so what I did, uh, I paint, I sanded. It took me like two days to sand this boat, the inside and the outside, man. So I, I completed that with a um, sanding machine, the hand sander, and then I primed it. So the primer I used was the the one pack uh, Norglass all multi-purpose primer. There's a picture of it on my right. It's really good, this primer. I didn't need any itching primer for this boat because the only reason you use itching primer is if the aluminium is brand new and it's got no scratches on nothing, then you need sort of like an itching primer so it like itches itself onto the, the metal, like burns, like melts onto the metal, the, 
the acid and the, and the paint. So because this metal was like so old, it had heaps of scratches on, especially from me sanding it. I just used an all-purpose all multi prime on it. It's just stuck. It hasn't peeled off or anything, so it's pretty good. I used a, a sponge roller brush for that, so it came out pretty smooth. Then after all the primer had dried, I then um, uh, I decided I had to decide what color I wanted to paint the boat, and so I decided hey, black and white is my favorite color. So I just did it black and white. I, I poured the two pack paint for the side, the the, the black one from Norglass. There's a picture again on my right. So. When I painted this paint on, I used a roller brush for this black paint. So the roller brush we used was not the sponge roller brush because if you use a sponge roller brush with the acid in that paint, it's just going to break apart, man. So you're going to have all lumps and stuff on the roller brush. I used another special roller brush. It was a, a sort of like material, but it's got a fine material in it. It's really strong. So I paint the whole, all the black with that, with that roller brush. You can see in the picture on my right here, that's when I painted half the boat. Um, so I just did a video of me uh, going around the boat, just so you can see what it looked like. I then painted the bottom and the inside of the boat with a, a one pack um, white paint from uh, Norglass. There's a pack there again on my right. So I really enjoy Norglass paint because um, it's, it's, really, it's really strong, that's my personal uh, Feelings about Norglass paint, uh, I like it. So I use that paint always on my boats. I haven't used anything else. Um, so for the for the bottom and then the inside of the boat, I use the white paint from Norglass. The reason why I didn't use a two-part paint for the bottom of the boat is because the type of fishing and boating we do, we do a lot of uh, stuff in um, with uh, low low tide and a lot of shallow water adventure stuff. You know, so. Sometimes we're actually standing next to the boat and pushing it over the sandbank, so it gets scratched quite a bit on the bottom. And so I just thought it was best just to use the, the cheaper paint for the bottom. Um, it wasn't really cheap, it was just a one pack. While I was sanding it and all that, you can see me sanding it here. I took a video uh, with my cell phone um, in the security camera on my right here. Um, I was sanding it, and so before I put any primer on it or before I put any paint on it, I had to get all the holes fixed. You can see on the right here, I got, I got a picture of, um, I circled all the holes with a, with a black marker. Um, there was a few holes there, so, so I sent it to uh, Kev at Brisbane Marine Wilding. Um, so he fixed all the holes for me, he did a really good job. He, he, he did the whole boat, he went through the whole boat and checked all the holes and welded them up. That came out pretty awesome, I was pretty happy about that. The floor was uh, not that hard actually, it was, um, it was pretty good. I first fixed the rib on that floor because I saw there was one rib missing. You can see the picture on my right here. There's a rib there missing on the floor. So I, I, I went to Bunnings and I bought the pieces and all that and then uh, the joints and then um, I cut it up and I uh, made the extra rib which was really good because I know if I never had that rib there, the floor would be, might be warping by that section. So it's good just to do, just to do a good job. Enough cardboard for the sides so I can make a stencil on the shape on um, how I'm going to cut the wood out. So I drew like the shape on the side of the boat, then I got a knife and I cut the shape out and I put it on top of the wood, I measured the width of the wood and the length, and then I just worked it out how, how, how big the sides are going to be. And then I, I put the pieces of um, cardboard on the sides of the wood and I, I marked the wood, and then I, I cut it out with the jigsaw. Uh, I used 12mm plow, marine plow for this. Um, you don't have to use anything thicker because if you use something thicker, it's just going to be heavier. So 12 millimeter plow was just enough, especially with the ribs, so it was pretty good. So, so I managed to put a hatch in the front, as you can see in the picture on my right here. The hatch is awesome, I use it for a lot of stuff. Um, it's not as big, but it's big enough. I had to treat the wood before I carpeted it. So what I used was a, a Nor Seal epoxy wood treatment. So that makes the wood um, super water resistant. Okay, so I did, uh, I did three coats of that on, on the, all the wood. So it's, it's, it's really like water sealed. Um, you, you especially have to do um, at least an extra two coats on the sides of the plywood because that's where water can get in and start seeping into the wood is from the sides of the plywood. But after I carpeted the, the, the floor, before I placed it back on the boat, I carpeted the, the front seats, the front and the back seats with um, marine carpet. So you can see in the pictures, that's what it looked like in the front and the back. And then the next picture over here, that's when I put the floor on the boat. 
Then after I finished the floor guys, I then uh, started to put the wires back together. Uh, I took the wires out from the side of the boat so I can paint the side. So I managed to install them back on the side of the boat. They came out pretty awesome. So when I speak about um, buying stuff and doing stuff on this boat, everything has to be marine graded. So the, all the paints and uh, everything on this boat is all marine uh, grade stuff except the, the windshield in the front. I just use normal Perspex for that. The hardest part of this boat was probably the windshield in the front. Because um, when I put when I when I took the windshield, the off was good, but when I had to take it apart to paint it, man, uh, if you can see in the pictures here on the right, it was like um, it was like a puzzle. So as soon as I took everything apart, it was cool. I painted it and stuff, but putting it back together, all the fr all the framing and stuff was like a it was like a puzzle, man. It, it took me a whole day just to put it back together. Then after all that hard work was done, I put the floor in, uh, I repainted the boat. I then um, I started to put the stickers on, okay, so I got stickers made for the boat. I got this uh, Let Those Adventures uh, logo made here as well. Got my Regio stickers put in the front there as well. So I decided um, I want to make all the stickers white because uh, black and white just looks cool. And so then I did the anchor wall in the front of the boat on the bow. I then took all the carpet out, all the old carpet, then I replaced it with new carpet. I glued it in, I made it all nice and all that. Um, I put a, a new cleat in the front as well. I put new navigation lights as well in the front of the boat. I put uh, strip lights inside the boat, uh, running underneath the gunwale all the way around the boat for night fishing. It's a nice and it's a, like sort of like a dim light, so you won't get night line at night time. I replaced the anchor lights as well. Um, I left the battery in there because the battery was still very good. I installed a, a decent bimini on the boat, and then I put a, a rocket launch on the boat as well. Check it out. So then a Bimini, the rocket launch is up there. Got a back step put in the boat from Kev from Brisbane Marine Wilders. So over here, that's it, it's pretty awesome. I do have a battery I keep in this uh, boat. I'll keep it as a backup battery. I'm just trying to get it out now to show you. I keep it in this bag here. The bag's pretty old, but at least it protects it, you know what I mean? So this is the battery over here. See? Just a backup battery. There's the cup holders I installed. I've got two of them. I love these cup holders. I'll never go without them. There's another one there. I've got the same cup holders installed in that boat. In the back, I got two 25 liter um, fuel tanks, so that's my main one, that's my spare. I've got a battery, uh, I made the battery case smaller in the back so I can put it that way. And then I've done the floor, see how I did it. I made the carpet, it looks quite nice, and like the seats and the floor look the same color. Check it out, there's the seat here. This seat was originally in the front of the boat, so I moved it to the back. It just looks better in the back, so the captain will be there, and then the other person will be on the about uh, port side of the boat, so it just uh, weighs it out equal. Yeah, and then I've got my fishing rod holders over there. Check it out. I love this hatch, I use it for everything. See, I've got my emergency grab bag over there, so if emergencies happen, I just grab the bag and jump overboard. I've got my emergency um, oars over there. I've got my fishing rod holders here. These are my other fishing rod holders. So yeah, that's why I installed these uh, side rails in the boat, so I could put these fishing rod holders there. So I've got two in the back and two in the front, on top of the bow over there. Okay. I've got my little basket type thing on the side here, so I can just attach my, this is my emergency whistle, so it's easy to grab. There's my uh, lanyard for my fishing, that's to cut the line and all that. There's my fishing pliers, got the radio, got the, um, the gang switch over there some emergency details. I got my USB ports, I installed two USB ports here. This is like a cigarette lighter that's for like um, fridges and all that if I want to get a fridge or something. This is a voltage reader, it tells me how much volts I'm using in a boat. This used to be a tilt, the boat used to have a tilt when I, when I bought the boat um, they had taken the tilt out already so it doesn't have a tilt, everything's manual. I got this uh, compass over there which is absolutely useless man. And then I got this awesome um, fish finder slash uh, GPS uh, on the boat. 
Then in the front, I've got my uh, port and starboard stickers. That's just to quickly remind me which side is port and starboard in emergencies. I've got my life jackets on the top. I've got the kids' life jackets on the bottom. A fire ext extinguisher over there. That's for emergencies as well. I actually got flares in the back here. There's my flares over there for emergencies. There's my VHF radio. That's a water resistant radio. It actually floats as well. Well, that's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell on top of the subscribe button to be uh, notified every time we put videos up. Cheers, peace, bye. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. Peace. Don't forget to subscribe, guys, and click the notification button. Peace. <laughs>